What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Dima Podcast. It's Neela. And it is Adis. Oh, what's up, family? Shout out to all our subscribers. Light. Is Shout it? Shout out to all our subscribers. I thought you made the light a little less bright. Yeah, it, look at... I don't know. No, no, it looks good. It looks okay. good. <laughs> Who do we got to shout Just out? I know we have a... Know. Let our team know. No, seriously. <laughs> Who do we have to shout out, Neil? We have a subscriber of the day. Shout out to Kalfa Rafik. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Okay. Welcome to the TDP family. And if you are new, be sure to hit that subscriber button. Welcome, Kalfa. Welcome to all our new subscribers. We got a few. Yeah. Um, I love when we have those videos that have a lot of traction because... Our subscriber count goes up. We see people commenting. We see people. A lot of people are shy to comment and give us your thoughts. Yeah, and a lot of people just give too much thoughts. And I hate you all. And they just have a <laughs> lot to say. And, like, it's good because you feel me. <laughs> you. Your mom's a hoe. <laughs> your mom's a hoe. <laughs> there is this one comment that we got. Like, first and foremost, when we get hate comments, it comes with the territory because, like, we see all of these um uh, YouTubers, like we were talking about the Tiger Belly Brendan Schwab stuff, mm. and he Brendan said he's not on social media because he like literally cannot take the abuse mm, and the yeah. mental <clears throat> abuse that comes with social media because once you grow your following a little bit and there's eyes on you, we believe in the bad eye, and there's some people that don't give a and they could just get off whatever they're thinking, their intrusive thoughts that hurt people without any repercussions. Like there's no um, policing on the internet. So I'm starting to realize like this shit can affect you so much. Like it when I see a hate comment, I'm like, I can't. My <laughs> day hurts. I know, low key, but like it's so funny to me. I had seen one and I texted it to Addis in the morning, and he goes, "Yeah, I know." And I was like, "Let me respond." And he goes, "I like reported it as spam." <laughs> yeah. And I was like, "No, I wanted to respond." It was I was like dying laughing. Yeah. Luckily, I'm very like I'm in the makeup industry, been in the game, so like I get hate comments regardless all the time. Like some people are just toxic. Yeah. So it's always noise to me. Like I don't care, and I already know in the entertainment especially on an opinionated podcast it's 10 times the toxic you feel me because like we're talking about shit and we on our perspective on it and people don't agree or disagree or whatever so it is interesting but and that what flows can right into what we were going to talk about reality tv what's good <laughs> no bro. yeah so neela we were in the pre-brief right we were talking about like so what we do is we pre-brief before we go into our podcast so it's super organic but we have an idea of the topics at hand. We have a laptop in front of us if we need to kind of like use that resource. But usually this is off the dome, you feel me? So yeah. when we were in our preview, we were talking about um, Selling Sunset. And we did a previous episode on Selling Sunset. I haven't watched the show. Um, you got to watch it, dude. Yeah, my girl likes the show and stuff Everyone like that. Everyone loves that. But I don't. Well, clearly it's fake. Let's talk about Selling Sunset. How soon into filming do you think the producers decided that you would be cast? as the show's villain. Episode one. Do you think you've ever taken the role of the villain too far? No. I don't like you, but like, I don't have to be your friend. I was wondering why I wasn't getting listings for a while. And then I was like, oh yeah, it's because I'm not being my boss. I think the girls along the way had a really hard time because they started thinking it was real. It is a male dominated industry in the production field to which they manipulate women, they harass them. So they'll say, if you say the sentence, we'll let you leave. It's the intimidation tactic. Can I show you something? Yeah, please. come after me you can't afford my lawyers <laughs> so christine who is you love her you hate her fan favorite or complete like villain i don't know how i feel about her i think she's toxic on the show but like when i see her more and on other uh podcasts and like doing and like on the media outlets and stuff i like i i like her i don't not like her i just think she's kind of crazy but she recently went on call her daddy podcast on spotify and did a whole like outing of like the show, how she feels, the whole, like, the script behind the show, the way they write the show, the whole, like, orchestra, how they navigate through, like, the drama within the show, right? And she was, like, willingly speaking about it, dropping names, knowing she's she even, I think, wrote that, like, I'm going to get sued to for To the this. point where she said, I might get sued and 100%. I don't care. Yeah, so she's, uh, yeah, it's, it was insane. She basically outed out how, what was it, seven story writers? Yes, insane. six or seven, I think, And yeah. Christine wasn't on, so the final episode of Selling Sunset was actually a reunion, and she was not on it. She didn't come because the show basically ended where she over Jason and, like, Mary, who's, like, the man, office manager, um, by, like, playing another real estate agent, uh, paying someone $5,000 to not work with that agent because she has beef with that agent from, like, a guy in the past. Shout out to the story writer. Yeah, <laughs> which is, like, 
first of all, so wrongfully written because they know she has money. And like 5000 is just such a sketch, odd, odd number to give somebody when you're selling people houses in the 50, 60 millions, Eddie. So like what billionaire is going to take a $5,000 check to not work with someone when they're already in the market for like two, three, four, five million dollar homes? Like 5000 is nothing to them. It's pocket change, you know? So that was already awkward because you could tell it's fake, even if it was or not. But so the show ended with like her. She's basically going to get kicked out or fired or whatever. That's kind of what they implied. Um, and then she didn't show up to the reunion. But now she's going and doing all these podcasts. And she's saying that I'm definitely going to probably be on the se- the next season, which just goes to show, bro, that reality TV is a great platform to grow your brand. And there's a reason why everyone still flocks to it, knowing that they can be villainized in the show. So most of the villains usually get the most play after, you know? Yeah. Jersey yeah. Shore had that same thing. A lot of their their personalities start to grow. Angelina was kicked off the show. She was the villain. They brought her back because people wanted it. But it's so crazy to me how they create these villains, bro. The narratives, yeah. The narratives because, and I'm going to quote this, right? So Christine, like Neela said, went on the Call Her Daddy podcast. Shout out to Call Her Daddy and Alex Cooper. Awesome podcast. You guys should definitely go watch it. Yeah, I brand. remember, bro. I remember when that first came out, and people in the office were like, "Dude, listen to this." And it was two of them. It was pretty raunchy yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And they're all the girls were like loving it. They're like, "You gotta listen to this type of stuff." And now she's like popping off, popping. and it's just one of them now. Yep, just one of them, just Alex, and she got like a fifty million dollar deal with wow. Spotify. Wow. Um, she's only on Spotify, so her older stuff is on YouTube. But dude, her stuff is good though. It is, mm-hmm. and it's interesting. You know, she mm-hmm. got Kanye's. What was Kanye's ex's name? Uh, um, uh, Julia Uncut Jumps. Yeah, Uncut Jumps. Yeah, that girl, right? So she <laughs> Julia brought. Fox, I yeah, think? she yeah. brought like broke the internet with that interview because yeah. I think that was one of the main interviews she's had. Yeah, but she goes on Call Her Daddy, right? And she basically says that they instigate these scenarios. So she says, and I quote: "So we show up to set, and they separate us in different rooms." And then they wait until we're ready to film and they send us in. But in the meantime, they'll have someone say, oh, my gosh, you know, Christine just said this about you in the previous scene, right? And then they'll come up to me and say, Chelsea said this about you. So they set up these scenarios which instigate their emotions intentionally. Like literally before, imagine you're going about to shoot a scene with like you and I are going to like shoot a scene, right? And then the producer goes up to me and says, Neela called you a bitch. (laughs) Exactly. And then I'm just like, what? (laughs) And action. Action. But like, don't they know that it's all cap? Like, it's almost so obvious that they're stirring shit up. But I guess to your point, I think Christine's like strategy is like, I'm already in the shits. Why not make myself something out of it? And she has like, she's her own individual now, aside from selling sunset. I think they even I read that. She might potentially open up her own brokerage, which might even stem into her own show. I wouldn't be surprised. Spin off. Yeah, right? Yeah. But um, these reality shows, like, even, like, I go back to, like, the Hills, Laguna Beach, like, the, all my shit. Good show. I love them, right? Like, and then you have, like, the Kardashian reality shows. You have, like, prior to that, the, um, even, like, those, like, Flavor of Love. The like Flavor toxic, of Love. Like, <laughs> like, grew up to all that. Like, New York. Remember I that love girl? New York. <laughs> the Real Chance of Love. Like, the best shows, right? Like, that's where it all came from. Even that rocker one, what was it? Brett, uh, the heart guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Tila Tequila had Tila one. Tequila. What ever happened to Tila Tequila? No idea. But um, yeah, so like all those staged, 100% staged. They have to be. That's why I'm starting to understand the Kardashian universe. And like, there's only so much that can pique people's interest over 15 seasons, right? Mm-hmm. So definitely when, when she says we have six story writers... I totally understand. Like, like you said, they definitely know, okay, like this per like they probably do it in a way where they actually think this person talks shit. I think they're smart enough to push it, but also, right? The actors and actresses have to know, like, look, if I want to get paid a million an episode, two million an episode, I'm essentially, even though it's reality TV, I'm an actress. Yeah. I'm like damn near an actor and actress on reality TV. So I'm going to push the Annie when it comes to these scenes and I'm going to make myself look crazy. That's the same thing with podcasting, right? Neil and I are in this weird little limbo moment with this, right? We could do wild, raunchy, stupid shit. We can talk about weird shit. We could bring on weird people that can give us a lot of views. But here's the thing. Like, are we dumb to not do that? Because I'm starting to feel a little dumb in that aspect, right? Or should we do that? Or should we do that? Because that shit sells. Yeah, it does sell. I mean, if you think about it, the world is so tuned into all this, like, 
trash TV. Like it's literally trash TV and me being part of that. Like I love watching this stuff. It's playing in the background. You're so invested because we navigate towards such drama. And what reality show do you know that doesn't have drama? It's always a matter of throwing a bunch of people in a house, a bunch of people on a brokerage and just stirring shit up like a bunch of pretty girls that are in real estate, which I don't even know if real estate works like that. Like, cause they said it on the reunion too. They're like, they show you the price of the house and they show you the commission if they sell it. And you're like, oh my God, this person makes 300K off of one house. That's one commission. That's one million. Yes. And that's not even like touching what someone makes in a year. Right. So, but then like in the reunion, they're like, so do you take really get that much money? And they're like, no, they get a good chunk of it. A percentage goes to the brokerage and all these other things. So it's like, they just, if you're really naive to that stuff, like you're going to literally go into it, believing all of that. And like, it is entertaining, but like, it's also like, they actually aired this on TV. Like anybody with a brain would be like, this is so staged and fake and like just ta- like trash. And, and and you can tell like when they do, I always think about the randos that they have, like the other agents or the one scene people that are just there in the moment and like how they, how they coach them through it. Like, are they actors and actresses? Like they even have people coming into their open houses at these. And it's like, you could tell that these people are all, fake people that they've hired like they don't, to come they, in and walk around. None of them are interested in none buying of them. Them. No, these people are not. I guarantee you they don't look like the buyers, bro. You look at them and you're like, what are you doing in a $20 million house? Like, you're not buying this house. They I have swallow. champagne in their hands walking no, around? No, it's fake. It's all staged. Oh, yeah, 100%. And then there was this hilarious, like, uh, moment where, like, Jason, too, like, they, he's getting held clap back for, like, going outside, being on his phone and his camera showing. Yeah, you saw that? I saw that all over TikTok. And he was, like, closing a deal. But yeah. um, I'm, like, I'm glad that Christine said this. It's important to know the shit behind it, you know? I agree. Because if you didn't know that a lot of this is... Because even when you know it's reality TV, now the narrative is still getting pushed. Like, it ain't really reality. And I like it ain't that. reality. But in all honesty, you still have this small uh, inkling to be like, yo, maybe it is kind of real. Right? Because there's no way. Remember we were talking about it in the pre-briefing? Yeah. You were like, well, how? I was like, dude, she talked about having six story writers, right? That's wild. Because they, when you think about how they go about it, it seems organic for the most part, but it's almost impossible because they don't show you in a 30-minute to an hour episode, they're basically showing you a highlight reel and condensing everything in the best parts, oh, most yeah. drama-filled parts. Because in regular real estate, right? It's not all sunshines and rainbows and ever like that. There's 17 things that you're getting. They're not showing the emails that are going out back and forth between your agent. It's kind of like, do you like this home? (laughs) It's $40 million. It's beautiful. Showing you a little bit of drama with the people and then the people ending up selling it. And then that number coming up in the bottom, 1.2 million in commission. Yeah, I know. And you're so right about the, that um, piece on they'll film a whole scene for an hour and take two minutes of it for yeah. the episode condense it because there's no physically impossible yeah. for you to fit everything in there right and the way they they frame it too right like if it's like someone walking in or they run into someone in a certain place like bro, there's no way you keep running into each there's other there's no way you're running into these people not knowing that they're filming there like it's all like obviously the seven writers one writer's texting another saying okay show up to this restaurant we're gonna be here like it's just and then there's a I whole lighting was... crew and then they're like oh sh- yeah. she's right there <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy with the boom mic right here. Can you sign this waiver really quick? Okay, yeah. go in. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And then the people in the background like have to act oblivious it's to the so cameras stupid. everywhere. Come I'm on, really bro. curious. Like, are they stupid or are we? No, is we it the are. Audience? No, it's America because like we. This is the shit we live for. This is what sells. And this is now every girl you know wants to be a real estate agent. Am I wrong? Hundred million percent. And dude. He, like and like. The next best thing, and now it's like, a, it's wild. And I love real estate. I don't have the capacity for it, but like, it's a great concept, but it's not like this, I can imagine. Like, At all. I have people, I have friends, family that are real estate agents, and I see them on Instagram mm-hmm. hustling, pushing out their listing. Only five people are viewing their stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, there's um, so many real, if you have it, and I know I'm going to sound really, really, um, it might be just LA thing though. The, the the volume there is different. And also, bro, you gotta have it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you're like, I'm not gonna lie, looks play a part. Oh yeah. If you're a pretty girl, I guarantee you you're gonna sell. Yeah. Because bro, you'll go and join a brokerage that sees potential in you, right? Or if you have a mouthpiece, right? Mm-hmm. And you're really good at selling, 
that'll show. But you can't just think because you watch this show, you're going to go and sell millions of dollars worth of listings. They're not showing you the $300,000 trap house that they're trying <laughs> to flip and Glendale. You feel me? Yeah. And shit like that. You're seeing the best of the best. And that's not a reality. Some people really struggle to sell one property over the... In years. In years. You yeah. know what I mean? You definitely have to have some sauce to you. I believe it's definitely doable if you put in the work. But I definitely see a lot of people wanting to be real estate agents <laughs> now that they watch this show. And I'm like, dude, there's a lot of downtime. Being a real estate agent is not easy, bro. No, you have not. to think outside of the box because you you have to think people without college degrees can go and get their real estate license, right? Mm -hmm. The um, amount of people applying for their licenses is so much. And there's so many real estate agents out there and so many brokerages out there that are so competitive that you need to think outside the box and think outside of this like hyper focused idea of like selling these million dollar houses, which yeah. honestly you could be that lucky person that just gets in there and starts going dumb. Right. I believe that's doable. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not as easy. It's about as the networks, think. the connections, the areas also like yeah. in LA, I imagine real estate is different if you're in the right area. Right. Also like the connections that you're making, you're selling to celebrities, you're selling for celebrities, things like that. And you're working with clientele who are up there within their, their range of like what they want to buy too. So you have that aspect, but in general, I think the, the stem of the show that's really just intriguing that keeps it what it is five seasons seasons in is the drama the villains the vil and, and christine <laughs> like she's a big part and it's also it's funny to hear her actually i think authentically talk now versus like being on camera because she does stir shit up on the show because she does sound freaking crazy on the show and it's like okay well if you know what's going on in the back end i guess it's an acting mechanism i don't know like you got to play the part because she has built like a platform for herself which is why uh, and she's one of one of two i think one of the highest paid actors or actresses on the, show? TV, on the show she said her and jason right yep jason because the other the twin brother the other one doesn't talk ever <laughs> he's just hella quiet yeah that's you what can i mean tell he's like forced to be <laughs> i'm sorry i love them though yeah so they're millionaires i almost like billionaires off yeah. behind multi off multi behind. and that, that's what i mean sometimes you got to be the villain you know what i'm saying i'll play that villain if i get paid 100 million dollars <laughs> i'll sign that check at least we'll go in there and act like he doesn't know what's going on stir shit up yeah if the person if the story writers goes literally if the story writers at these go in there and talk me calls you a, yeah Straight up. Where can <laughs> they find wild. us, Neils? Uh, YouTube.com slash the Dima podcast. And until next time, TDP. We out. We out.